I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on what is the best Kindle to purchase in 2023. I absolutely adore reading on Kindles. I think it's personally better than reading on a paperback. I know that sounds crazy, but I think it's true. I think it's a sensory thing for me. I think it's more convenient and I've been able to devour more books for less money because I'm a Kindle reader than if I had like an unlimited collection of the books that I've read in my life in hardback or paperback form. So let's go ahead and get into this. And I'm gonna make this short and sweet so you know right up front which one's the best one for you. I'm also gonna talk about my top tips for how to read for free or for a very, very low cost using some very special programs that I will show you. And it's super simple. Let's get into this video. When it comes to 2023 Kindle options, there's really only three, even though they will try to sell you and show you a bunch of different options, there's really only three viable options for what works the best and what's the latest technology that they offer. I would completely ignore the Kindle Oasis at this point in your life. It's just not for you. And even though it's the only one that now still has like a cellular connection, I have it, I would not recommend it. I don't think it's worth the money and I don't like the confirmation of it. It's just very strange and very expensive and not worth your time. I am actually refilming this video because I filmed a vi this video a few weeks back and realized after coming to a different conclusion that I needed to give it a better shot and I needed to do more research. For example, I did not have the latest basic Kindle model and I felt like I was doing you a disservice because I wasn't really fully showing you true options of what's available to purchase in 2023. So I bought the basic Kindle 2022 it's the latest release that they've done is the basic Kindle. I am so pleasantly surprised. My favorite choice in 2023 to buy when it comes to Kindle purchasing is actually the basic. Now in my previous video that you didn't see that I'm I've since now I'm refilming, it was the paper white which is more expensive, about $40 more expensive at minimum. But I'll tell you why this is my favorite. Number one, price. It's obviously so much more fun to spend $40 on books than it is on different specs for a Kindle when you're getting a reading experience out of the two of them. Now please ignore the shiny, the, the kid, basic Kindle does not come shiny. I just popped a free screen protector on it that came with one with the case and it happened to be glass. It's not my favorite, it's not my preferred choice. I would definitely recommend putting a screen protector on your Kindle, but I would go for the matte version like this. For me, it's actually about kind of thinking about what is the, the actual heart of the Kindle's purpose? To hold a thousand books in the palm of your hand, to go wherever you go, to be portable. And when it comes to portability, please answer me in the comments, which appears more portable to you? Which is easier to slip in a pocket, in a coat pocket, in a scrub jacket, in your purse on a day-to-day -day basis? It's obvious that this, the smaller version, is more portable. It's less expensive and it's more portable. And for that reason alone, I think this is the best option in 2023. I know it sounds crazy because this is not actually water resistant. So if you, like me, like to read in the bathtub sometimes, I don't take a lot of baths, I'm mostly a shower girl, but I would say that if you're gonna go to the beach, if you're going to go to the pool, if you're going on vacation, then just opt for a paper white. Doesn't even have to be the fancy signature edition. I don't actually even think that's necessary. But I definitely do think that if you require some measure of water resistance, go for the paper white option. Unfortunately, you'll sacrifice a little bit of portability there, but you'll get things like the auto sensing dimmer for the like the brightness. That's a very nice feature that I do miss when I'm reading on my basic Kindle, a larger screen. However, where I was wrong in this previous video and where I am since corrected and why another reason why I'm refilming this is that the basic Kindle has the same DPI or dots per inch which is what you can kind of think of as clarity um, or how realistic the screen looks compared to a real physical book. The resolution is the same. So what that means is previously on the basic Kindle, it was 300 DPI and the paper white was 600 DPI and a huge boon for the paper white was that it looked more realistic. There's more lights for the backlight. There were more actual LED lights, light bulb. But the biggest thing was the readability. And now why I never purchased a basic Kindle was because it was only three 300 DPI, which means that it just looked really, it just looked not pixelated, but it just didn't look like I was looking at a physical book. Paper white looks much more like a physical book. Well, now that point is moot because they are exactly the same. Screen quality is the same. Yes, this is smaller, so you get less text per page, but let me tell you, when it comes to portability and weight, this one wins out every single time. 
This one is a lot heavier, it's a lot larger. And yes, if you have visual difficulties, if you're visually impaired, you might find it difficult. But remember, you can change the text size. Unlike a physical book, you can actually change the text size, the font. You can actually put it in a dyslexic font, which is incredible. It's a, a font called Open Dyslexic, free on every single Kindle, and you can read in a dyslexic font if you're affected by that. So you can change the text size. So it's really just about like how often do you wanna be, I, I'm a fast reader so I'm tapping the screen constantly anyway, and I read with a very small font size just to minimize the amount of taps that I have to do to swipe the page. But it's, it's so, it's so, everyone's gonna tell you to get the paperweight, okay? They're, maybe they're trying to get commission off of you. Maybe they're trying to do this, whatever. It's just more expensive. I personally think the basic Kindle is the way to go. And this is the one that lives in my purse now. I don't even take the the paper white with me. Um, this is the one that I'm reading on. If you are visually impaired, if you don't like to take your Kindle around with you, if you like to make notes in a margin, then I would suggest looking at the Kindle Scribe. However, I have found that I just don't use it. I bought the pen and I bought the case that flips over and everything. And they are making more books available that you can scribble on directly. But what greatly disappointed me when I purchased this in the beginning is that you can't really do that yet. It's not like you, you get your book and then you can write in the margins or you can like, you can highlight, but it's not the same as highlighting a physical book. It's just sort of like the same thing as highlighting in a Kindle, but with a pen, which of course you could do with your finger too. So I just, it's not water resistant, so you can't take this to the beach, you cannot take this to the pool. I mean, you can do so at your own risk, I wouldn't recommend it. So really, I like it for actually enlarging a book and it just being a lot more text on one page. The screen real estate is phenomenal and it's super thin. I love that they didn't put that stupid like handlebar on it like they did the Oasis. It is a metal back, which is really nice, and it is lightweight for the size. I think it's comparatively lightweight. I actually think the paper white feels like about the same weight. It's crazy, I don't know why. There is an auto sensing um, screen on this, which is really nice. I don't know how they do it because I don't see the actual sensor on the screen. So that's bonkers bananas to me. I don't know how they do that. There's a physical button, but um, and they have relocated it, which is phenomenal because button down here on all the Kindles is stupid. Like everybody turns their Kindle off accidentally. It is you know, nice to have, and it's very responsive. It's, it's, it's a, it's a new Kindle, so it's, it's very nice. But I just think, and this is the back of mine, by the way, let me show you. I have a whole TikTok on how to customize your Kindle. And since then, I, you'll notice that these are white. They don't actually offer a white Kindle, but I miss that. I missed out on that phase in the Amazon Kindle's life. And I used to have well, the second generation Kindle, which was white and had a keyboard on it. Um, and I miss that a lot. So I prefer reading on a white Kindle. I know that's weird, but it's just like the OG color to me. So I actually got some skins, which I put on my Kindles and it was so easy. It's like way easier than putting anything on an iPhone. I have a skin on the back and it's white and I have a skin on the front and it's white and I will link those down below so that you can customize. I mean, there's so many other, I have, let me show you. I have a leopard one <laughs> and I have a checkered one for the tiny, for the small Kindle. It's so cute. I thought about putting that one on too, but I just wanted to go with the classic white for now and um, I can change it anytime I want. Take it off, put it back on. Super cool. So this is actually the blue Kindle, the navy, which is really, really pretty. So I got the, the blue navy Kindle and it has Wi-Fi. And one of the things that's really cool too is that you can hook it, you can hook your library account up to an app on your phone called Libby. And you can basically link your Libby and your library and your Kindle account all together. So you can actually borrow books from the library without ever having to leave your home. And yes, there's sometimes a wait and there is a time limit that you have to read it because other people, it's sort of like an NFT. It's it's not, un they don't unlimited like let people borrow books for an unlimited amount of time. It's just the same as if it was a physical copy. You check it out, you read it, it's due, you gotta turn it back in. So, um, but you can read for free books on your Kindle. I don't know if a lot of people know about that, but I'll put all the information down in the description box so that you can purchase a Kindle, the basic Kindle, and read for free. Speaking of reading for free or almost free, one of the biggest boons to my reading repertoire has been the Kindle Unlimited subscription. I actually was not aware of the Kindle. I was like not, a, I, I just never cared that much about it until I got a free three month 
trial with the purchase of a Kindle. I think it was with the Paperwhite. I was like, I kept finding out that like these books that I wanted to read were free. Like it was like read for free with Kindle Unlimited with your subscription that I already had. And I was like, huh. So I plowed through so many books. And now I think the Kindle Unlimited is either like $9.99 or $11.99 or something like that a month. It's an unlimited subscription. You can check out 20 books at a time on one Kindle, which is more than enough to like have out at one time. And you basically just return them almost like a library, almost like a paid library subscription, except there's no limits. There's no holds. You don't have to return the book after a certain period of time. It's always immediately available. You don't have to wait for it. And the the repertoire, like the catalog of books, almost every book that I want to read is on Kindle Unlimited. It's in, I haven't bought an actual book in a really long time. And the book I bought, I actually really regret and couldn't finish. It's a book called Neon Gods. It was a, appalling. It was just really, really terribly written. And um, I couldn't finish it. And I had paid for that book and it's like, you know, oh well. Like that book was a is, a is a book I paid for. It got really great reviews and I hated it. The great thing with Kindle Unlimited is that you can read these books and if you don't like it, so what? Just send it back or keep it, whatever. And whenever it asks you, okay, you have more than 20 books, what do you wanna t send back to Kindle Unlimited? Then you just send back the ones that you've already read or you send back ones that you're like, nah, that wasn't even good anyway. So like all of these books are Kindle Unlimited. Like this one I already read was phenomenal. Obviously this one is not Kindle Unlimited, but this one I'm going to read and the one I'm reading currently is on Kindle Unlimited as well. Where is that one? Yeah, Wings of, on Wings, Wings of Ash and Dust. So the other thing too is that the response time of the Kindle Basic has gotten just as good as the Paperwhite. So it's really just a Paperwhite that's been crippled a little bit. There isn't an auto sensor. There's still brightness. There's still LED lights on it. There's It's still equally as responsive. It's a little bit smaller screen, but in my opinion, the Kindle Basic is the best one because it is the most portable, it's the lightest weight, and it's the most cost-effective. I think when they created this one, they created a Paperwhite killer in my opinion. I know there's gonna be people who are diehard paper white fans, but I think this is the best one. And this is the one that I carry around with me every single day in my purse. Will they come out with a new paper white this year? Probably, maybe they could in the fall. It's very possible that in September, October time, they'll announce a new paper white because their paper white has been out since 2021. This was a 2022 October release. And it's very possible that on their life cycle that's that's coming, but I just don't really think there's anything more they can do unless they release a color ink version, which if you didn't know, the e-ink e displays color is actually a thing and it's actually in production in other e-reader models. They're actually introducing that and that would be incredible, not for the actual sake of reading, but really for the covers and sometimes the, like the occasional illustration or like in the fantasy books that I read, like the maps kind of understand what's going on. I think that would be enormous and I would love, I would jump if there's ever a Kindle with color display. Hopefully it's not enormous like the scribe, but if they came out with something small like this, and it was color, that would be my next Kindle purchase. As always, everything is linked down below, including all of my stickers, the decals, the cases that I recommend for each Kindle, including the granny case that I talked about in my uh, <laughs> TikTok video. If you like to have organization and something to hold on to and to put your library card and stuff in, you can certainly um, check out all of my recommendations in the description box below. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.